हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू शिक्षा मंत्र यस इन शिक्षा मंत्र टुडे वी हैव समथिंग वेरी मच स्पेशल एज यूजुअली वी डू इन शिक्षा मंत्र व्हेन एवर यू आर इन शिक्षा मंत्र ऑब्वियसली यू आर गोइंग टू गेट समथिंग स्पेशल समथिंग वेरी मच एसेंशियल फॉर द प्रोसेस ऑफ लर्निंग सो इफ यू वांट टू एजुकेट योरसेल्फ विद very much effective tools of english grammar and many other things of learning obviously this is the best channel for you so don't forget to subscribe this channel with all the notifications on but now we are going to discuss about something very much very much useful in your learning of english grammar yes verbs we were discussing about several different types of verbs those verbs which normally we don't face but these verbs are really very much essential and today in our discussion of verbs we are in yes the lexical verbs just believe me dear friends this verb is such an important one that you must learn this well without a proper learning of the lexical verbs it's really difficult very very difficult for you to get into the realm of english language in a very effective way so let's begin our discussion of dialectical verbs what what are lexical verbs hello dear friends is there any mistake we were going to discuss dialectical but here it's lexical whatever it may be first we must consider the word lexical verb when it's lexical obviously this is the opposite of the lexical yes dear friends first you must know what is lexical verbs for without a proper understanding of lexical verbs it's very difficult to understand the lexical so let's start what's a lexical verbs lexical verbs are the main verbs or action verbs in a sentence they can show the subject's action or express a state of being they fall into several categories transitive intransitive linking dynamic and static so this is the status of lexical verbs they show action whose action of the subjects or express what a state of being so if lexical verb does these things obviously the lexical verb is going to follow something different or something other than this so what's that we'd find it out here in this slide in some english sentences the verbs are light verbs remember this term some verbs are light verbs that lend relatively little semantic concept so what's there these verbs are light verbs that means the dialectical verbs are light verbs they are not so much heavier as that of the lexical verbs lexical verbs are very much heavy transitive intransitive so many terms are associated with this verb but dialectical verbs are not so heavy they are light so let's see how these verbs get lighter okay so here when we discuss of dialectical verbs they are the common verbs such as have take make or give which when used with particular nouns have very little meaning of their own so they have very little meaning of their own that's the important point in these dialectical structure most of the meaning is found in the noun not in the verb so that's how they lose their weight in lexical verbs we find the sense mostly in the verbs why because we know verbs are the life of a sentence so the sentence uh, in a sentence the sense gets embedded into its verb obviously when they are lexical verbs but when dialectical verbs the sense gets embedded in the noun and not in the verb so the verb gets light but the noun gets heavy 
that's why these are not lexical rather these are delexical verbs in most cases there's a verb which has a similar meaning to the delexical structure what's this obviously to know this we must shift to this point delexical structures are very common in english and an understanding of them will enrich one's fluency of the language so when fluency is our target not when but every time our target is fluency to, so to get fluent we must learn delexical structures well yes dear friends here we aren't going to discuss about only delexical verbs but also delexical structures so that's where our focus would remain so here we have a sentence i had a hot shower then he showered with hot water so here two sentences we have one with had a hot shower that means have verb then comes a noun but in the second sentence he showered with hot water so where lies the difference we are going to get the details of these two sentences and it would help us to dive deep into the delexical verbs in the example above we can use both the form of the sentences to mean the same so these two sentences both are correct you can't say that this sentence is correct and that is incorrect it's not like this then by using delexical structure we are able to include additional detail with the use of an adjective hot so additional detail with an adjective this point is also very much essential for delexical structures then comes it is also important to note that the delexical structure have a shower is perhaps more commonly used than the actual verb to shower so here what we get in these two sentences a shower this is a noun but this noun is actually containing the sense of had that's the verb whereas the actual noun sorry whereas the actual verb for this sentence is shower but here in the first sentence we aren't using to shower as the verb so what finally we get finally this is the case not only with the above mentioned example but in many of the examples discussed here so this is our concept of delexical here had this verb is not so much powerful but its power is hidden in the noun shower and the shower the noun can be well equipped with an adjective that is hot and it's possible only with delexical verbs and not with lexical verbs so when he showered we used this uh, lexical verb showered and you could see the sentence is not so much effective as that of the delexical verb so here what we have learned using delexical structures allows us to add additional information to the action by using adjectives with the nouns rather than an adverb which at times can sound awkward yes this point is very much important with an adverb it might sound a bit awkward but for delexical structures it doesn't happen so let's take a look at some examples with each particular verb so what are the delexical verbs we'll get the list here and the topper of the list is have so have can be used as delexical verbs but how we use have with food and drink specifically when they get associated with a meal breakfast lunch dinner a snack a cup of tea etc this is talking a chat a conversation a discussion a talk the list is longer you can stop the you can pause the video and you can have a look at the list and remember them you, uh, if you want you may uh, make a note of them and if you want the screenshots of these uh, uh, of these screens that is of this video you'd have to visit my channel 
my telegram channel english grammar shiksha mantra the link is there in the description below and from there you can find it out you can check you can get all these otherwise you'd have to take notes of all these slides so it can be used for washing when a bath a shower a wash or scrub or used or resting that is a break a holiday or a rest also we can use have to mean these agreeing like an argument a dispute a fight etc so here we'd have some example i usually have a good breakfast so a breakfast breakfast this is the noun which is supporting the delexical verb have and here also we have used an adjective that is good to put some extra sense into it and to make the sentence better here we have another example we had a long talk about the problem so had the lexical verb supported by talk noun and long this is the adjective to support the delexical verb there have can be used in some different ways also we also use have with nouns formed from verbs how there's an example i think you should have a look at this so a look this is a noun but we must remember that this noun is coined from a verb and we can use delexical have with what with a noun that is coined that is formed from a verb like this there's another i'm going to have a right the same thing happens here as well the delexical verb have gets a noun which is coined from a verb so that's our way to form delexical structures they are going to have a swim the same thing happens here a swim that's a noun but have is a delexical verb and remember it's not possible you can't do this with lexical verbs only you can do this with delexical structures and they appear to be very much a uh, high sounding they express your uh, heart better that's why delexical verbs are so much useful so to learn the delexical verbs in detail is very much essential and now in our list the second one is take the same thing ha happens here you may pause the video like washing a bath a shower a wash and write them down resting a break a holiday a rest there's the example i always take a cold shower the same thing here as well a shower that is a noun and it's supported with an adjective that is cold and the verb used here is delexical verb there's another i always shower with cold water in the morning so what happens here we are using to shower the lexical verb and you'd find that uh, the delexical verb sounds better than the lexical verbs so this is why we must use delexical verbs in many sentences specifically the terms we are talking here so for these conditions you'd have to use delexical verbs instead of lexical and with these words as well like care care of etc write them down note them it's very much essential but we are going to have a, an example with this a photograph if we take this so what would happen we took hundreds of photographs so took this is the delexical verb supported by this particular noun photograph we have discussed now to learn its structure we must get this point that they work only with these nouns so this is how delexical to makes sentence creates sentence with a very a uh, very lucid sense Jen always takes a lot of trouble with her homework. Trouble. Now it's supported a lot of and takes. This is the delexical verbs. We also use take with some nouns formed from the verbs. We have already discussed it in the have. The same thing happens here as well. Nouns formed from the verb take a look. So a look. This is a noun, but it's coined from a verb. the same rules would be followed in take as well just like as verb they are going to take a swim so here we are going to have another of this list so so far we have discussed two delexical verbs the first is have the second is take and now the third one give so let's see how we can use give 
we can use give with noises that is a cry a laugh etc facial expressions that is a smile a green a look a glance etc and also hitting that is a kick a punch a slap etc there's also affectionate actions it's very much essential to learn because give has so many different aspects just like have they can be used for a hug a kiss a stroke so to share about affections it's a very easy way to discuss your heart it's a very easy way to express your heart through these lexical verbs so it's also of talking like some advice and answer some information and interview etc so how do they go yes there's an example see give a loud cry so this is lexical verb and also there's another example john gave a happy smile that's also a lexical verb and you'd find that every time the verb is not so much heavy in sense rather it's the noun so what is important here giving or smiling obviously the smile is important not the word gave that's why the verb is not so much important as that of the noun that's why this is lexical verb we must remember this and also there's another he i have to give a speech at the meeting tomorrow so the same thing happens lexical and delexical so let's uh, do with our next verb that is make so this is the fourth one of our list we use make with what with talking and sounds a comment an inquiry a noise a point but dear friends just remember if you follow the uh, way we use these dialectical verbs you find the same thing that is used sometimes for make sometimes for have and sometimes with tech so there would be a uh, uh, actually uh, common points that are uh, applicable for many of these verbs so uh, what you'd do you'd have to remember the nouns as well because these nouns are vital they're used but but only with these particular nouns talking and sounds of a noise a suggestion so these nouns are very vital you have to remember these nouns otherwise you are going to uh, get yourselves in some trouble there's also plans like arrangements a choice a decision etc so we have an example here try not to make a noise so we are having the dialectical verb make from here and then we associate it with a noise from here and it would mean talking and sound so try not to make a noise means try not to talk or sound talk or produce a sound so that's how dialectical verbs when get a particular noun a proper weightage form a great sense and a great sentence for us like this they made arrangements to meet the next day made arrangements so it's a plan and we'd very easily understand what is the hidden sense here in these dialectical verbs and the support it gets from the nouns is very much essential and important so in the next we have go so how do we use go as a dialectical verb yes shall we go swimming this afternoon so go swimming so what is important not the word but the noun ing noun swimming there's another mom and dad have gone shopping so not the go but shopping is important so go is a delexical verb and now here we have we uh, another point to remember we use go with ing verbs for common activities yes whenever there's ing verb it would mean common activities obviously with delexical go how we usually go walking at the weekend the importance is with walking but this is a very common activity it's not something special that's why we have added ing after the verb and made it noun and we have used this with delexical verb that is delexical go yes this is delexical go not lexical go then he goes running every evening after shopper the same thing common activity and now we use go for a remember this expression we use go for a with what with verbs to do with moving so we use go for a 
with verbs to do with moving how a jog a ride a swim a run a stroll a walk we have already checked them in our previous examples but here we are going to have another because they you won't find i and g i want to get out of here let's go for a walk let's go for a walk so go for a this is the expression that would be used and we have used it here but with this we have conjugated what walk so that's how we form the sentences his gun for a ride so gun for what a ride on his bike so this is the rules that we must maintain while forming dialectical structures with go for and there also another dialectical verb yes the list is getting longer you have to remember each and every of them now it's do so if we use do with ing nouns to do with work especially work in the house so here's one limitation work in the house it's your turn to do the cooking so dialectical comes with cooking you do the washing up and i'll do the drying so dialectical also comes with washing so household activities are introduced are produced are expressed with dialectical verbs and here we have with other nouns to do with work how there's an example i need to do a few jobs around the house another i can come out of this evening i have a lot of work to do so that's how we can use to do with work jobs etc there's another we use do with nouns when it is obvious what the action is so with this it get only a fixed meaning there won't be any confusion if you produce this sentence i'll have to do my hair before we go out do my hair it has a particular meaning that is i'll have to brush my hair there's no other opt alternative only this would be meant when you should do my hair the same thing happens have you done your teeth it would means only cleaned or brushed your teeth nothing more than this so they have a very fixed sense when used with dialectical and the action gets like this they coined it just like an idiom so you don't have any other option but to go with this show sure, there we have another a question like what is have you done the car so have you done the car this could mean could mean what it could mean have you washed the car have you mended the car and have you put petrol in the car so when we are with such sentences they may mean so many different things have you done the car and here this is this have is not dialectical just uh, remember this so that's how we can learn so many things about dialectical verbs by remembering them and that's all folks we don't have much to discuss actually we have discussed in pretty detail wait for the next and if you like this obviously the video must be liked and subscribed with all notifications on so that you can get many of such videos so have your comment there in the comment section below like and subscribe and share it with your friends so that they can also learn many other things from english grammar language and many other educative videos so we'd stop here obviously we are going to meet very soon with another fresh discussion on education so till then bye bye happy learning